So if you're unaware, a few weeks ago I posted a video harshly criticizing Castlevania Nocturne, and it was a hit. However, no good video isn't without its detractors, and there were quite a few. Now, I'll obviously get around to making a video mocking the mind-numbingly stupid takes people put in that comment section, but that won't be for a while, as I think that conversation itself is a more important discussion I want to have right now. To be more specific, I mean to discuss why almost any conversation criticizing what people love is shut down faster than FTX. We've all seen them, the, well, actually, and my personal favorite, your arguments are unsubstantiated. Of course, these claims almost always come from chronically addicted Reddit users whose only two brain cells constantly fight for third place. It is never about conversation, it is about confirmation and conformity. The reason behind these hollow and false claims is always multifaceted, but I think we can boil it down to three major points that all overlap to an extreme degree. Denial, gatekeeping, and ideology. Ideology is the core of this mess, with people raised and taught what to think, not how to think. And that anyone who disagrees with your opinion is wrong, a waste of time, uneducated, and outright evil. The gatekeeping comes in when those who saw an ad one time on the internet.com recognize that fancy horseshoe on the spalder of one of those big UAC soldiers people really like from Halo. These tourists will lay claim to a whole franchise by ironically trying to colonize it as they demand everything bend to their views and sensibilities at the cost of the world building like entertainment conquistadors. Lastly is anger and denial. It doesn't matter how many examples you give, whether it be anecdotal or shown, because there is no rational argument, no matter how calm or collected, that will convince someone who refuses to accept reality. Conversation is the exchange of information and ideas, and I would add in the hope to improve the quality and outcome of the subject. I've said this before in past videos, I root for Hollywood because I enjoy entertainment. We all do, we don't want a movie to be so bad it bifurcates an entire fandom, but these things happen. The resulting reviews or rants by those like me are not meant to prevent talks about a movie or show, quite the contrary. These are active engagements of the subject at hand, because fans want to see what we love and enjoy improve. After all, the best arguments are the ones that take both sides into account, and to do so, we have to meet at the table. The problem comes in when those who adhere to the aforementioned issues try to sabotage any chance at conversation because their heads are so far up their asses they can drown on their own bullshit. Detractors can't afford to allow people sorting out ideas and discussing issues because it goes against everything their doctrine tells them, that their own personal enjoyment is all that matters, and that art is purely subjective, among other retarded decrees. This is why ideology plays a big part in the splintering of culture, and I find it so ironic that the most binary of thought often comes from the people who claim to be non-binary. Obviously not everyone, of course, because I'm not an absolutist, but absolutes are the foundation of their arguments. The nah -uh or you're just wrong, and, who can forget, your taste is just trash. Almost none of these people are real fans of whatever the subject is in the first place. They couldn't tell you superficial information, yet they'll claim that you're a loser because you know what you're talking about. There is nothing wrong with being a nerd or a geek, as just about every subject is open to anyone who wishes to join. But, when you demand things change to fit your own personal viewpoints, you aren't what I would call a fan. You're a tourist. You came by, enjoyed the sights and sounds, went home, and forgot about 90% of what you experienced. Case in point, a number of people tried to claim that Capcom are the ones who own Castlevania, when it's Konami. The arrogance here exemplifies the gatekeeping practiced by these tourists. They catch any information without confirming it for themselves and act as though it's gospel and treat you like the non-fan for trying to correct it. Another example is Richter is in his mid-30s in the games. No, he's not. He's 19 in Rondo of Blood and he's 24 in Symphony of the Night. This lack of knowledge flows right into the decision-making when they demand franchises and fandoms bend a knee to their sensibilities. A story about a family destined to fight Dracula, set almost exclusively in Transylvania by the respectful Japanese? Well, fuck the Japanese, I guess, because they're white now, so they don't matter, and now we're going to diversify the cast by being racist and race-swapping characters because that's the narrative. What's that? World-building? Established characters? Rules and consistency? Why would we ever need that crap? Writing is for losers. I just want to watch things blow up to tickle the lizard part of my brain. Now make me female space marines, because I said so. Uh, but the genes 
seed is coded exclusively to human males, so women literally cannot become the God Emperor's angels, although the Sororitas exist. Also, they'd literally die in the process alongside 80% of the men. Well, I want what I want, and if you don't give it to me, then you're gonna get cancelled on Reddit. Neat. And when their demands aren't met, and no amount of false authority can change the minds of others, they resort to their last tactic lash out and deny, often in the form of false claims calling you every phobic ist and ism someone can make up. It's not an argument to call someone racist, sexist, or whatever, instead it is the equivalent of erecting a danger, do not enter sign. Again, the goal isn't to allow discussion, rather to shut it down, and this is the least someone can do to prevent criticisms or questions from reaching the ears of those who may listen. And if someone is curious and even partially agrees with some arguments, then the only thing to do is lash out out at them as well. Don't approve of established characters being race swapped? Now you're racist. Don't like Hollywood pushing sexual relations with adults onto children? Now you're a homophobe. Did you point out the faults in an animation that are stilted and bad? Well, you're not an animator, so what would you know? Just because I'm not an animator doesn't mean I can't point out bad animation just as someone who isn't a vocal teacher can tell when someone can't sing well. Anyway, point out a historical fact that the Aztecs sacrificed people by cutting open their torsos to rip out their still-beating hearts in a barbaric and savage ritual backed up by nearly every historian on the matter? Ha, huh, source bro. For all these reasons, and I'm sure many more, it isn't about advancing culture, improving art, or being realistic about an outcome. Preventing conversation helps them ensure that their view is justified. It confirms their narrow viewpoint, which complements the point I made in the last video about writers today are children, that people today demand more for less without realizing the damage we are doing to the art industries and among others to be realistic. When you throw childish tantrums, lash out, and berate others who disagree with you, then it only divides fandoms and seeds animosity, ultimately resulting in, as I've said before, the lowering of the bar for what gets made, and in turn, it harms everyone in the end. And watch, it'll be real funny when people who don't watch the whole video make these very same arguments or say, nuh-uh, you. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.